well, I don't know how long I've been doing this. Maybe Scott, maybe Peggy, that have been around a while, can tell me, I, maybe my wife can tell me, how long I've been preaching and teaching. But one thing that I've always believed in my heart, that a preacher or a teacher, someone that represents God, must do it with a pure heart must have love for the people that that they share the word with, must be able to pray for everyone, must be willing to cry with them, to laugh with them, rejoice with them. And, you know, I believe Linda and I are good pastors for you. And we put this this work, this five acres together for the body of Christ because we wanted to make sure that at least we could give out some great teaching. Now, there's wonderful churches out there. Everybody know that, knows there is. And they're all coming together again. It's wonderful. You know, so we're just glad you're here. and We adopted you. You're part of our family. We wanted to just give you that. So the rest of us, let's open our scriptures up. We've been doing a series on reigning in life in Christ. Today's subtitle is Enjoy His Grace on Your Race. Enjoy his grace in our race, but I want to make it personal, in your race. Can you say amen? All right, we're going to go to these scriptures, Ephesians chapter 2, 4 through 10, and Romans chapter 12, 3 through 4. And you can read along, of course, we have it up there. But we're going to be studying on these areas. Now, i got some great stuff to share, some stuff to reaffirm. Remember, sometimes we have to hear the word over and over and over again. Why? So it gets seeded, it becomes a part of us, and it's not something we just know about, something that we know and walk in. And also welcoming those coming in, get your tablets out, we're going to have a great time in the Word. Okay, so here's the first scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, 4 through 10. Wonderful, listen to the grace behind this. But God, who is rich in mercy... Because of his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive, made us, excuse my love, made that too, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Love that. Just kind of absorb that for a minute. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. You see, we're to walk in Christ. We're to talk in Christ. We're to move in Christ. That's our tank. We're hidden in Christ in God. Can you say amen? But Christians, we get away from that. We're thinking we're living for God. Yes, you're living for God. But if you're living for God outside of God, you're going to have a rough time. You must make sure you pray in the morning, get yourself all lined up and tuned in, just like a fine guitar or or a fiddle, violin. Can you say amen? Even a trumpet has to be adjusted. Oh, those clarinets, you know. You want to come out like that. The idea is that prayer time is to keep you in tune with your father and keep you in the tank. Can you say amen? And it goes on further to say that in the ages to come, he will show exceeding greatness of his riches of his grace, in his kindness towards us in Christ, in the tank. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now look at this next phrase. And that not of yourselves. You didn't do it. It's a gift of God. Not of works. You can't work hard enough to earn it. We can't pay enough to get it. We receive Jesus out of a humble heart. Lord, I'm sorry. Come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. Lest anyone should boast. See, that's the whole thing. Religion boasts. Religion divides because it's man establishing their tabernacle for God. God doesn't want us to build huge things unless he purposely directs us to. Can you say amen? And certainly doesn't want us to take the attention. Make sure in your business, in your life, what you do, that you put God first and keep God first. Say amen. And doing that, you will prosper. You will be blessed in what you do. Because God will be directing not only your life, but he'll be directing you. So it goes on further to say, you've been saved, not of yourself, for it's a gift of God. For we are his workmanship. Another word for that Greek means you are God's masterpiece. He is painting and putting in your life the beauty of your first 
design. That first design who God wanted to be way back in Adam, that beautiful creature was stolen from us. And we are, we've fallen. But now God is restoring that back to us. Can you say amen? But see, what do you mean? I thought he gave it to us. Yes. But you know, I can go into a great big store and all the things in the store are all for my good. But I'm not going to be able to experience all of those things at once. I'm going to have to learn to open those products and taste them and everything. So is the kingdom of God. You're going to come and see and taste God is good, but it's a daily walk, and God opens up these things to us. That means we can't stagnate too much, or we'll kind of fall behind. And I don't want to fall behind what God wants done in my life. Anybody feel the same way? I want to keep going. I want to stay ahead of the blade. I don't want to fall behind, and we won't, because we're following whom? Jesus, our good shepherd. Good shepherd, lead me. For we as wor his workmanship created, now see, because we're born again in Christ Jesus, and what were we created for? Good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. See, there's a plan of carry over here on the left. And there's a plan of God for Carrie over here on the right. And I need to do right and not go left. Can you say amen? Second scripture, Romans 12, verse 3 and 4. I love this. I'm going to read it kind of slow. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who's among you, that's all of you now, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. How many know that pride's a bit, a bit kind of a dangerous thing? And we know there's two levels. There's a right-wing pride and there's a left-wing feeling sorry for yourself and been feeling over better than yourself. Be balanced. Love people. Stay balanced. Ask God to, to help you stay humble. Amen? Don't think more highly, but to think soberly. As God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. You see, being a pastor, my faith has to be a little different than your faith. Because I have to believe for a few different. Now, in your family, and your being a mother, maybe a grandmother, you have to believe differently in that area. Can you say amen? So God designs and given you his grace and faith specifically designed for you personally. It's for everyone. We all partake of it. But I got carry grace. Or maybe that's carry grease. Oh, grace. Hello? And you've got sherry grace and Peggy grace and BJ. You've got all of, the, all of you. And that's why we are spending time with Christ in a personal, more intimate way. So that that grace and uh, who we are supposed to be becomes who we are. How we walk in it. Lord, show me your ways and help me walk in them. Walk step by step by with, with you, Lord, and not out of you. No, oh, Lord, I don't want to get out of the tank. Let me just say this to you. Yesterday, I had a, got, got up in the morning, and man, it was like I was all out of the tank. You ever had a day you got up and you felt out of the, the protection of Jesus? You weren't. But you just didn't feel in sync. And you know, the sad thing about it is, is we have to remind ourselves who we really are in Christ. Remember, we're like the man that beholds himself in the mirror. And if we, we, we're not careful, we'll quickly go away and forget the spiritual part of our life. James chapter 1, 22 through 25. So we really need to understand that God has dealt to each of you a measure of faith. You've got all the faith you need. Don't ever say, Lord, I don't have enough faith for this. Maybe he hasn't grown, but you do have enough faith. Remember the mustard seed? And the last part of that scripture, for, for as we have many members, all of you, this is what he's saying, but all of us do not have the same function. So Linda's going to have a special grace. and There's going to be several of you going to have certain graces to do who God called you to do. Your mother got mother grace. If you've got a grandmother, your grandmother grace. And if some of you are so blessed, you've got great-grandchildren, your great-grandchildren grace. And then there's some. It's great-great, I think, right? Wow. Now, you can tell. This is kind of a, a fun thing. I'm, I'm, I'm teasing. 
You can tell a good pastor when most of his congregation are older. <laughs> Joking. It's a joke, Seth. Pray for me, all right? Amen. Now, remember, most of dearly, if I mention any names, it's because I love you. It's not because I think you're guilty of something. You know, Carrie, come to the office. Ah! No, no. But think about it. Let me ask you this question. Did Jesus ever call out names? Can you think of any time? James, he that's seen me has seen, you know. Philip, you know. Hello? All the time. It was him showing dearness and love towards that individual. You know, I think the church has gotten away from that. You're in a church like, uh, uh, what is it, um, Price's Church there over in, in Indonesia. And he's got tens of thousands of people there. And he goes, hey, Matthew, I love you. And about six dozen Matthews stand up. You know, he can't do that. But you are still a small family, and I still love you dearly and pray for you a lot. So I feel like I, I have a part of you. Amen. Don't want to lose any of you with me. All right. So let's look at this. All right. Our, our over our scriptures, we just got through reading. And so I want to cover these four areas, and then I'll read my paragraph to you. Number one, we're going to, uh, we are fully equipped for the battle. Can you say amen? We are fully equipped for the race. So the name of this is what? Enjoying the grace in your race. Okay? So we're fully equipped. There's no reason a Christian can't have what God promised. Can you say amen? All right. Two, all right, we're called to prepare and train for the race. This is what we miss up when we're training our children and grandchildren, when we miss if we don't go to church, because we're supposed to be trained for the spiritual life and race that we have. Now, let's go back. The race here is your life. You're in a race from beginning of your life to the very ending of your life. That's your race. Not my race, your race. So God gave you a way in which you can join his team through Jesus and then gave us a coach, Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? And if we'll listen and read his word, he'll teach you how to finish your race with high measures. Hello? Because you're not running your life alone, are you? I love those professors that tell us, you know what? We might have discovered we're not alone. <laughs> that scares me. Yes, we've never been alone. Never were alone. Never will be alone. We'll always have something around us. We walk and talk in the realm of the spirit. And there are creatures and angelic beings all around us all the time. You just cannot see them. In fact, if God, you get up in the morning and say, God, encourage me to remind me that they're there, you'd get up because we have two-thirds angels and, and helpers in the spirit than the enemy has anything. But the key is the enemy operates because he's been stripped only in the physical realm. And that's where our eyes and ears are, our feelings are. And if we're not careful to die to ourselves, we're going to have, we're going to live for our feelings and our eyes only and our ears. That's not bad. But if that's all you do, then you're walking in the flesh because flesh is really eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and touching. And if you run your life only by that, then that's where the enemy operates. But you are a spiritual being. Can you say amen? Then thirdly, the race is a walk in Christ. Being focused in stride. It is not a dash. This isn't a hundred yard dash life you got. No, it's a Marathon. In order to run a marathon, many times you pause to walk. You stop to sleep. It's your life. It's not really a physical race. And you're not competing against anyone else. So stop looking around, seeing how everybody else is doing. That's not a good thing. Measure your joy on who got elected or not. That's not necessarily a good thing, although, praise the Lord. Can you say amen? 
We measure our life by our relationship in God and how he is, by the Holy Spirit, is coaching us in our life through the word of God. Can you say amen? I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by anything else but by the word and the spirit of God. That's our goal. Amen. So, and then finally, how will we finish our race? You ready? Point one, we are fully equipped for the race. Let's look at what Ephesians chapter one, when Paul is speaking, he's trying by the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom. Verses three, Ephesians one, verses three through six. He's trying to remember, he's talked about Jews and Gentiles. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed, that's past tense, with a, every spiritual blessing. Say, I have it. Notice it's in heavenly places. That's just an old phrase meaning in the spirit. In other words, all these blessings come to be in the spirit. God wants us to walk in the spirit, be in the spirit, talk in the realm of the spirit, in agreement with the spirit. Why? So that we get all the benefits of God's promises and they become ours and the enemy can't touch them. We have a kingdom. What is that kingdom for? To protect us, shield us. Read through the Psalms and mark out all through the Psalms, all of 150 Psalms, and see how many times it says he's a shield, he's a buckler, he's a tower, he's a protection, he's a hedge about me. All those times, just mark them all out and write them down in your tablet and find out how much it is true that God wants nobody to mess with you. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in realms where Satan can't touch. In heavenly places, in Christ, you're in Christ. Just as he chose us before him, before the foundation of the world itself. That we should be before him without blame in love. Wow. That was the original design for you. That's where we're heading to. That's what we're attaining to. Can you say amen? That's why the Holy Spirit come. That's why we have the word of God. That's why we have the covenant, the blood. That's why we have all these things. So we can again walk and talk with God. Wow, folks. There's nothing greater. Just remember, if your flesh is too much alive, you're going to go by your feelings more than God who you can't see. The only way you can see God is to see him by faith. You see God by faith through his word, through the things you know of God. That we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated. That was the plan and adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to this be praise and glory of his grace by which he made us accepted. Say, I'm accepted by God. You know, there's still Christians that think that God's mad at them or doesn't accept and won't accept them. And yet, if you have Jesus in your heart, you're totally accepted. Yep, he gets all of you. You guys want to laugh with me? How many here's had a dog, maybe a cat, an animal? And it's so cute, so loving. But with the animal comes the poo. What am I saying? Sometimes we enter something and we forget about what other things are. Hello. So don't forget about the poo it, to shovel it out. Can you say amen? And enjoy what God has. So God accepted you the way you are, but he's smart enough not to leave you that way. Amen. And then down to our next scripture, Romans 8, verse 31 and 32. I love this. Get this now. What shall we say then to these things? All the things that are coming against you, these things of the world are trying to get your attention, and you need wisdom just to slow down and get the rhythm of God. What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, what? Who can be against us? Now, where does God dwell? He dwells in you. Where do you dwell? You dwell in God, and also you're seated with him in heavenly places. He who did not spare his own son, invested him, but delivered him up for us all. How shall, now listen carefully, how shall not he with him 
Give freely, give us what? How many things? How many things? Now, I'm going to say this to you. This is not everything. Because he's not giving you any spiders or if you ask for bread, give you a rock. Hello? This is all godly things. The all things, they're all godly things. With Jesus, you get all godly things. Say, I get godly things. I get all godly things. So if something's coming at you, it isn't God sending you that's not godly. It's for you to discern and kick it aside where you should. If it's a mountain, you need to remove it. If it's a tree of bad and evil, you need to pluck it out and uproot it. Why? You got God in you. You're in the tank. You're here in the earth to bring Jesus to people. Not to fight for your survival. Come on, laugh at me. There are Christians that are barely surviving. You know why? Because they don't go to church, don't pray, they don't seek God, they're into gossip, they're doing all that kind of stuff, and they want to fight for Jesus. And well, we don't have any gossips here, folks. I won't allow it. And if those of you know me, I won't allow it. If I catch you, ooh, ooh. I just say simply, we don't talk about people in a negative way. Can you say amen? And I've also, God warned us not to talk bad about another believer because it brings a curse. Everyone say, I got it. All right, so let's go on. And he with him shall give us all things. All right, a couple of points. Church, the believers in Christ have been given all things of God pertaining to life and godliness. You find that in 2 Peter chapter 1. Number two, so since, these are the notes, so since we have set up, been set up and equipped for the race, our life, it is high time to prepare and train spiritually for these things. Someone say amen. Thirdly, to do this, we must be exercised by the Spirit and trained in how to finish well. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are so easily distracted. They're not together about anything. Things throw them off. You know, and so we need to train to be in the Spirit, stay in the Spirit, to keep in fellowship and to dwell with God. And, you, and you're not, we're not there yet. Please don't settle down and say, I got here. Ha, ha, ha. No, you just barely squeezed in. Now let the Holy Spirit, your tutor, word of God, let him make you, mold you into his masterpiece. You're the personal masterpiece of God. I am too. You're the only one. Let's move on. Now, this gets more interesting. Listen, are we willing and obedient to, to go this way with God? Are, are we? Are we? Must be exercised and trained. There's a lot of, Bob, I'm going to tell you with a cry of my heart, there's a lot of Christians that are not being parented. They're not being parented. What do you mean? Well, there's no mother and fa father God. It says in Hebrews and in Psalms that if you don't let God be your father, then you're illegitimate. You're not really his child. Well, that opens our eyes to, am I letting God really control and operate my life, helping me with the choices? Or am I sort of still guessing what's God, what's not God, you see? Amen? And God wants us very close to him. The only way we can is go through Christ and fellowship with the Lord on a daily basis. Now, this is not a boring walk at all. But see, there's an old part of our life, keep calling us back. Keep trying to get us back into the old ways we used to do things. Don't do that. God's retraining us. Hello, there are better ways to do things, even if the way you've done them was very good. God could show you to do a very good thing, very great. And so don't limit God's able to control, not control, but guide your life. Amen. He's never taking control of your life unless you relinquish it on a daily basis. Now, I have to be careful of the word control. For example, I have a steering wheel in my car. Is it in control? Yes. Move it right, car goes right. Move it left. Go. So there's nothing wrong with that term of control. 
Well, it's been so misused. God will not abuse you. He'll use you, but not abuse you. Let God have your steering wheel, your choice of control, so that he can steer you around problems. He can get you with the right people to a better job. Hello? He can do things for you, but you've got to be palling up with the Holy Spirit. You've got to let the Holy Spirit and everything guide you in his system. You can't live the way you used to live and expect to have any type of success now. That's why you're feeling like you need something. Well, yeah, we need daily manna. Say daily manna. I need daily re relationship with God to get some fresh ideas. Hello? And fresh things, thoughts, have him help my mind and all. Can you say amen? So, it would be a sad thing to know what we have and yet not willing to go after it and make the effort to get it. So I'm telling you, if you are where you are or where you're not because of how much effort you put in with God. It isn't the magic formula. It's time with God doing what he said. If he said, go to church, you go to church. Did you know it's a command in the New Testament? Most people don't. And you know what? Let him plant you where he wants you so you will grow because there's nutrients in that particular body that he planted you there. Not only that, but he put you in the body and made you an arm, an eye, an ear. And so don't try to be something you're not. Just enjoy who you are and, and get after it and love the people of God and go share Jesus. Amen. Stay fresh. Stay fresh before God. Say amen. So listen what 2 Peter says, chapter 1. I mentioned it earlier. This is talking about all things. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. This is chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. As his divine power, see, God, through his divine power, has given to us all things. You see that? That's what he's talking about. How he, will he not with him give us all things? And here, all things. Do you see that? All things that pertain to life and godliness. And how do we know about those things? Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. God called you to be excellent um, by which we have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these or through these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Say, I have the divine nature in me. He is God. Amen. He is God. See, it's the nature of God and, and Jesus is in seed form. And then it goes on having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So every one of you, all the bad stuff's in your flesh. So you're smart enough to take a shower and stay clean. Then you go to Jesus every day, get a good cleansing. Just takes a little couple of minutes. Get a good cleansing of all that stuff. Get yourself washed. Why? So corruption in your flesh doesn't rise up. I want to tell you, if you don't pray and often your flesh will rise up in rebellion. You'll find yourself doing and saying things you wish you didn't. Moving right along. Let's go to our second point. We are called to prepare and train. Do you believe that? Come on, let me see the hands. Oh, yeah. Amen. We're called to prepare and train. Now, who's our trainer? The Holy Spirit. Where do we get our training, training manual? From the word of God. Can you say amen? We have an Old Testament. We have a New Testament. The Old Testament are how things used to be. And the New Testament are how things now in Christ by the Spirit. Can you say amen? So I just kind of, it gave you where to go. Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 6. Remember, when you're reading the scripture and you're brand new, stay in the New Testament Related to you personally until you understand the plan, man. Okay? Otherwise, you get lost. Satan amazingly gets people lost in the Bible and overwhelmed with such information, they don't just kind of shut down. No, 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 no. You and Jesus and the Spirit go into the Word of God and let God begin to show you the plan, Stan. And then you'll become the man you need to be. Okay, so 
It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, he was in jail at that time, beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling. Remember, we are called to prepare and train. Walk worthy of that calling to which you were called with all lowliness. We're to stay humble and gentle. Be gentle towards others with long suffering. How many here know that people sometimes learn slow? You got to be patient with them. How many know that people are a lot smarter and quicker than any of us? You got to be patient with them too. You get it? Eyes off of people. And with all loneliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep unity. That's why I don't allow gossip. That's why I don't allow dissension, back talking, anything rebellious. Why? Because it says right here, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In the house of the Lord is just like a watering hole. It's just like a garden. In the house of the Lord, around God's people, you will not trample on each other. You will not talk bad about one another. You will treat the water springs and the well springs of God's local church as holy where God dwells. Just like they did, God wanted to be. So people will come into the church thinking it's a laundromat and share all their dirty laundry. Instead, it's a watering hole, a feeding place. It's a gas station fill-up zone. Can you say amen? And the sheep cannot drink nor eat when there's agitation. And that's why unity in the bond of peace. Look, you and I might going to agree on everything. Well, let's not be upset about it. That's stupid stuff, baby stuff. <laughs> Take a look around to the church. People are in churches, they won't go to the other church because there's those people there. And I'm, I'm just kind of hamming it up just a bit. We need to pray and break all that because God wants a unified church like a net that catches souls. I'm one part of the net and the church up the street's a part of the net. We're talking about Jesus, Jesus people, Jesus churches. One down the street's a big part of the net. You see, we're all catching God's people, helping God's people, feeding God's people. Can you say amen? And Christ is our focus because we don't want to give out. I, don't, I know as charming as I am, I don't want to give out too much of me. I'd rather give out Jesus. Come on, laugh with me. Okay, and it tells us in the bond of peace, but look at verse 4, interesting. Tells us there is how many bodies? One body says so there's only one church, so don't let anybody emphasize their body over your body. Say, hey, I'm part of your body too. Oh, you are. There is one body. How many spirits? One capital S, Holy Spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling. You have a calling. I have a calling. We all have a calling to please God, to be before him in this race before him, and to give him honor and glory. Someone say Amen. One body, one spirit, you were called to one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's being born again, because if you didn't get baptized in water, but you have Jesus in your heart, you're still going to heaven. Hello. Maybe you didn't ever speak in tongues, but you got Jesus in your heart, you're going to heaven. Say amen. That's the baptism that gets you to heaven. One baptism, one God, how many? In three persons, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all. That talks about the life that's in plants and animals. And in you all, that's what makes your heart and your brain works, is God's grace be when you were born. You didn't have God in you, but you had a portion of God's life making you and causing you to become. Everyone, wait for it. Aware. You're, you became aware when you were a child. And you grew up becoming aware. Now, folks, God has caused you to be born again. Now walk with Jesus so the Holy Spirit can make you aware of the things he wants you to know. 
and experience the wonderful promises, how to walk in such rhythm with him that you get the benefits. Can you say amen? Don't requate this to religion. I'm not a religious man. In fact, religious people said, crucify Jesus. Everybody that's religious will always find some disagreement. Let me tell you something. Here's a little secret. Satan thrives on you arguing and being in disagreement. Now, listen, I have to clarify. You and I don't like the devil. We're in disagreement with him. That does not count. But what the enemy tries to do is tries to get your life to be in disagreement with your spiritual life. Here you work hard. Listen, I'm talking to you. You work really hard, and yet you can't find all the time that other people can when they're walking spiritually. So the enemy comes to you and gets you to think either or. You're either going to be real spiritual, or you're going to just do this, you're going to be this, or you're going to be this. That's a lie from the devil. No, either or. That's how he thrives. That's a double-minded standard. No, your wholeness is what God wants. Your business, your life, your family, everything. There's not my family and then there's church. Can you say amen? It's all whole, one package. Don't let the devil play either or game. I either go to lunch with Carrie or I read my Bible. Either or, I'll play these little games. It draws all the strength out of you and into his hands. Oh, maybe you didn't know that. That's why he always gets you in conflict. It's such a hard thing. It's just a hard thing. Who said it was hard? The devil. Well, I feel like it's hard. Feelings. You see, remember, the physical realm is Satan's realm of deception. What does he have? Deception. That's it. Lies, deception, the ability to cloak things, keep you from seeing them. Not when you walk with God. Not when you have the light in you. Not when you're the salt of the earth. Not when you're filled with God. Not when you're in the tank. Can you say amen? Because you've got all God's equipment. You can see. You can move. You can walk. You can even release God to heal and save. That's why Satan's got you all of trying to get the church all messed up and entangled in their thinking. Go back to the man at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus says, do you want to be healed? The guy couldn't even answer Jesus. You ever ask somebody a question and they don't even tell you yes or no? That's how crazy people, that Satan gets people's minds. They're, they can't see from the beginning to the end. They're just kind of floating around. God doesn't want you that way. He wants to lay out your day, meet with him, and get on the way. Don't be such a lazy boy, a lazy girl. That's what it is. You pamper your flesh too much, it'll choke you to death. You'll wake up one morning with your arms around your throat. I'm joking, but think about it. Your flesh, your flesh is Cain, and your spirit's able. Your spirit's always able, but you need God to get it done. But Cain will always try to choke or kill Abel. So you bury Cain before he gets out of hand. I'm talking about your flesh. We're called to prepare and train. So now you know, he's in us all. Second Timothy, look at this scripture, chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Everyone say, me therefore. Me. Let's say it again, me therefore. me therefore. Okay, now let me talk. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. You have to know it, you have to recognize, flow with it, move in the spirit. And the things that you have Heard from me, Paul says, among many witnesses, all, every one of us, commit these to faithful men. That's who I'm looking for. Can I give you the things that I have? Can you turn right around and teach others so they can teach others and others can teach others? Or are you going to keep all of this information to ourselves? No, we're not. And commit these to faithful men who are able to teach others also. 
You therefore, say me therefore, must endure hardship. You're going to have some hardship. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now look at the next advice. No one engaged in war. Warfare. You're behind enemy lines. You are in the spiritual warfare, but not for yourself. For the lost souls of your family and your loved ones. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Oh, poor me. I just don't feel good. So you're entangling yourself. That poor me part's supposed to be dead. You're supposed to take the poor me right to the cross and stomp on it. Because it'll always be, listen, listen, poor me. No one that's a soldier entangles himself in the affairs of this life. That he may please him. We're here to please God. See, there's a little thing. Don't get entangled in the politics, all the stuff, everybody else's problem. You are not Jesus. You pray for them, give them to God, and let God work it out for them. You are not Jesus. You have Jesus, release Jesus, but you're not Jesus. So shoot the guns, bomb, and he's smart enough to know how to answer the problem. Speak and pray, speak and pray. You have tremendous control to alter your life through your prayers. And that's why Satan wants to entangle all these people all in the affairs of this life, which is passing away, so we can... Okay, so verse 5 says, and also if anyone competes, you're in competition. Remember, you're in a race, not against each other. You're, but you're in a race from Satan trying to hold you down and your flesh trying to keep you on the earth. And you're competing against that in Christ. And you're, now listen, you have to do it according to the principles of the spirit. You have to do it right. You can't just do your own thing and expect God to be saving you. You have to do it according to the principles lined out in Scripture. So listen what it says again. Also, if anyone competes as an athletic, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. And the rules are we have to stay in the tank, walk with Jesus in the Spirit, follow and read the Word of God so that we don't get in the way and hurt ourselves. Your emotions can hurt you. Thinking about yourself too much will hurt you. Because you won't be able to see any hope. And usually people feed that, and then they start going back into their old drug habits, alcohol habits, and then end up, if they keep feeding, it will take their life. Because Satan's behind all of that. You're smarter than that, say amen. A couple of points. We grow spiritually only where? In the presence of God. But to stay in the spirit and get tuned, it's our responsibility to, to set out that daily. I recommend first thing, get your coffee, get what you need, take a shower, whatever you do, and then just sit down with God and talk. And you say, well, I don't have enough time to do it. Then get up earlier. Tell God you really mean it. See, God's looking for meaning. That you mean it. Not that you're going to sit there. Oh, God, I really love you. Yeah, and your kids are going to hell and everything's out of order. You're not getting with the training program. You've got to train a little bit. Say amen. Now, if you go, ooh, ooh, you feel that? That's called conviction. It's a good thing. God is talking to you. Don't just sit there and let things rot. You know how to pull that stuff out of the fridge just in the right time so it doesn't turn green? You're better than something in the fridge. You need to be tuned up, tuned in, and trained. Second of all, the exhortation to all of us in this word is to be joined back with God and stay there. If you've been away, rededicate your life to God. Lord, I rededicate myself to you. And then learn how to walk through this life in Christ. Say amen. Thirdly, notice, 
we are a new creature, but we're in a war over human souls. Now, you and I can't reach all these souls, but we have equipment so we can. I can sit in a hot tub or I can sit in my prayer closet and I can pull out names and I can ask God to go. Listen, I bring them to God in the spirit and I bring God to them in the spirit. I have a lot of power and authority sitting in the presence of God in prayer. So do you. In fact, that's why the enemy is trying to keep you from a good prayer life. Because you can change your family. You can turn people around. He sees his brother sin to sin that's not leading to death. Can even pray and ask for that person. And God will turn him around. But we're never consistent enough. We just sort of do it. Starts to break loose. We start to feel good. Well, you just got a wonderful new president. And this entire nation is turning around. Don't sit on your loyals. There's people that need to be replaced and put in positions. And it's going to come through your prayers and you're seeking God. Hello. God, you put them in there. Don't be so foolish to read about them and think just what is said about them is how you're to pray. No, pray it this way, Lord. You know who needs to be in what office for, for your glory and for your purpose and your reason. Therefore, see that that is taken care of. Keep all other people that are go against your will out of that office. So, Lord, begin to work on that. Thank you in Jesus' name. Now, I, you keep that. That prayer is eternal. It's never going to change. It's being worked on. Unless I yank it out of there and say, well, I wonder where God's not doing anything. Say, not me. All right, moving right along. All right. And then fourthly, church, we are blessed, aren't we? So we become extensions of God's blessings. The reason why the Pentecostals and the revivals broke loose is people actually took God at his word and actually started doing the simple things God asked us to do. Go into all the world, lay hands on the sick, rebuke the devil, and just go ahead. He didn't say have to be perfect first. Stop allowing the devil to play that game with you. You're never going to be the side of heaven perfect. So get Sharon. I told, I told God, I says, God, our, I used to work for Boeing years and years ago. I loved it. Uh, and so uh, we were going on strike when that first major strike back in the day where, you know, we lived in, in a log cabin and everything. And I told God, I said, God, I don't want to go on strike. In fact, I'll tell you what, if we're allowed to go on strike and I address the devil, I said, Satan, know this, that every day that I'm out on strike, I'm going to be winning souls. And so in Jesus' name, I don't care. You're going to try to take our livelihood from us by working some system. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to go out and win souls. We never did go on strike. But I know that that wasn't the only prayer about that, you know, and God answered all the prayers and everything. But, you know, that bolstered my faith. Why? Because the enemy's defeated, folks. He's under defeat. Left one to the right one. Keep him there. Keep them under you, not in your head, not messing with your kids or your life. Keep them under your feet by being responsible and walking in the spirit. Say amen. Let's go to our next point. Our race is a walk in Christ. So enjoy him. So be focused and in your stride. It's not a running race. We're not, I'm not competing with you. Some of you, I hope you get so much more blessed than I ever could be. But you know what? And I'm going to help you try to get there. But let's all go after as much as God wants for us. Can you say amen? And stop looking around. You're in a race. No. If a, if a runner's in a race and he's running a race, is he looking around him to see how close other runners are running? What's he looking at? He's looking at the finish line. Look to pleasing God. Look to Jesus. He's your finish line. Well, I have Jesus. My, well, but still, he says to focus on the image of Christ. So you're changed into that same image. 
He says, put out the old man, put on the new man, which was created in the image of him. So you got the image of God and God in you. Now focus. Keep it in stride and keep looking to Jesus. Do not fill your mouth with what the devil wants you to say. Do not be thinking, looking around, looking on the way, but finish your race with joy. Go with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Folks, you're not alone. I love this. Oh, yes, we found out out there in space we're not alone. There's God out there. And I've always liked to joke at everybody. They talk about all of these UFOs and aliens coming in from outer space. You know, we have no account from anybody visiting us other than what we see in the planet. Somebody was helping us along. So for the Christian, we only know that there's two kingdoms in the earth operating. A kingdom of darkness under what's his face and a kingdom of light. Say amen. So all of those things, oh, way back then were under the control of the fallen one. So anyway, it's another history. We talk about that. I think he, some of us really need to see the whole story. Satan really wants his planet and he wants you because he wants to turn you into a slave to sin so he could use you to mine and to be his workers. Now, it's sad to say that you look in the world and there's a whole bunch of people who are already signed up with him. That's where we see all the bad come from. Everyone say, oh, oh. So we don't want anything to do with him, but we need God's wisdom to deal with him. Can you say amen? Therefore, since we are surrounded, where's one? By such a great a cloud of witnesses, those that have gone on before us, angels, everything, we're surrounded. Let us lay aside every weight, things in your life that really don't mean anything, that really slow you down. And the sin, the very nature of the flesh, which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance, the race is set before us. Remember, that race is our life. Looking unto Jesus. Every day, get up, look to Jesus. Go meet with him. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. And he has sat down in authority at the right hand of the throne of God. How should we look at life? We look for the joy in God. Get up every morning, you feel like 100 pounds of sin on a popsicle stick, you still look to God. Why? He can heal you right there. Don't let what you feel override what you believe. And certainly don't let that happen over a period of time because then your believer will get bent and you'll start believing for the negative things. Say, oh me. 1 Corinthians, look at 15, verse 58, tells us, Therefore, my beloved brethren, say yes. Be steadfast, immovable, always. See, we have to go forward. Don't sit. Don't think of yourself. Press on. Go forward. We what? What do we do? Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. God's watching every movement. Ephesians 2, verse 10 says, For we as are his workmanship, there's that word masterpiece again, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? He's got a whole life of good things lined out. So you have to get up, meet with him, make sure you're in the rhythm of it so you can receive all the benefits of it. Say amen. And if you're having problem, that's what, Pastors and people are for to help give you some advice, but not to replace Jesus. Amen. I'm just a helper. Okay, and it goes on again. So you're his workmanship. So you're under construction, say amen. A couple of points. Church, we have God living in us, right? We don't do it alone. We are a team with God. Jesus leading the way. Two, we were born again, rescued from sin, and the prison of this world. This world's still a prison. Our walk is with Christ, for he's our shepherd. 
for the purpose of rescuing others. You're still alive in this planet, not for yourself and your own, what you can get out of it, so you can reach others. Hello? You should be asking for opportunity. God gives you opportunity to touch lives of others in a positive and a good way, leading them to the Lord if you like. Amen. Thirdly, we are separated from our flesh according to God. He's amazed that we would listen to our own flesh. Who's, what does our flesh, who does our flesh have in it? Sad to say, the devil, you have the devil's nature in your flesh. That's what makes you age. Sick, get sick. Why things are broken. But Jesus fixes all those if you'll go to him. We are separated from our flesh in the spirit if we choose to walk with Christ. Then he will train us by the Holy Spirit, our tutor, to be exercised in reaching others. Let, Jesus said, let me make you fishers of men. They were fishermen, but Jesus said, let me make you fishers of men. When souls touch lives. We are his witnesses, one who can prove, examine, and demonstrate the resurrection of Jesus. Our job is to show, not a religion or try to get people just to come to church. Hey, I got power in my hands. You need healing? Be bold. Who do you have? You have God. Silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, I'm going to give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, can you say amen? Last point. How will we finish? Folks, ask you that. How am I going to finish with my last breath? So we want to make sure how we walk, what we do is important. Don't waste a lot of time. So, but don't let the enemy make you feel condemned either. You know, God doesn't condemn any of his kids. Even though you feel you deserve it. No, he doesn't. That's what hurts. It's when you break God's heart and he doesn't say anything to you, but I love you. And you just break down and you cry. He's breaking you because you're selfish prides. Get that off. Get that crust off you. Hello, you're not the crusty crab. Amen. All right, Matthew 25 tells us just how we're to abound. All right, how we're going to finish. So in Matthew 25, verse 14, I'm going to read real quickly. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling, Jesus, to a far country, called his own servants, the first the Jews, then us, and delivered the goods to them. And to one he gave five talents to Piggy, to another he gave two to Scott, to another he gave one to Carry, to each one according to his own design and ability. And immediately he went on a journey. And he who had also received the five Talents went, got into life, and made another, traded them, and made another five talents. In 17, likewise, he that received the two, another two more also. And he that received the one went and dug in the ground because he was in the flesh and hid his Lord's money out of fear. And after a long time, the Lord of these servants came and settled accounts. How many know we're going to have to stand before God and give an account? So when he that received five made another five, I just want you to focus on this one phrase. And he said, and he brought another five more talents. Verse 21 says, and his Lord said to him, well done, good, and what? Well done, good, and faithful. Well done, good, and faithful servant. You see, we can be a son, but not a servant. You can love Jesus, but not serve in his house. You have to serve in this house for you to grow. Oh, yeah, it's not easy. You don't have to always feel good about what you do serving. That's your flesh. Are you going on giggles and, 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 and space outs? No, you're going on God. And real maturity is doing what God wants, whether you feel like it or not. It's quiet in here. So, well done, he said, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. Listen, I will make you ruler over many things. God's looking for responsible believers 
Why? Because when it's all done and said with, we're going to reign with Christ in the millennial. And some of you are going to have cities. Some of you are going to have townships that you're under God ruling over. What do you mean ruling over? Teaching them and experience them like a shepherd, under shepherd. And remember, the devil's bound, so there's no devil. Well, there's really humans, regular human beings during the tribute, I mean, during the millennium. Yes, though he never did receive Jesus until Jesus returned. I don't know how that's going to be, but yes. And God's going to use you and I who are faithful and good to teach others also. And so he'll give us faithful servants, things to be responsible for. How are you doing? Are you responsible? And so the Lord is returning, and he's going to settle accounts. Let's get after God's will. Say amen. That's not to make you feel bad. But if the enemy has slowed you down by focusing on you, you're not going to want to do anything. Don't you recognize that? Hello? You should be here early. You should be picking up something, getting things involved. What can I do to improve the body, the house of God? Yeah, this is a little house, but it doesn't have to stay that way, evangelist. Hello, your job is go gather. Go into highways and the byways and compel them to come in. Hello? And we even have help. Internet, YouTube, phone call, you know, using a telephone. You see, people don't come to church for only one main reason. They're not invited. And especially by a friend or a loved one. Well, I've done that before. Look what I've been. That's before. Why do you use the befores to try to regulate your nows? Are you that ignorant that what you failed at before is going to regulate who you are now? God wants me to give you a word, sister, and that is you've sat down and you are taking ease, and God says, I want you to get forward. That's for you, T Sister T. And it's time to move and abound forward. Otherwise, you'll grow stale and you'll be distracted. Are you ready to do that? Look how far you've come so far. Now, if you've had that little stay, now God wants to get after it. Lose some more weight, walk better. All those things, God, working with your family. Can you say amen? Now, the neat thing about that is totally encouraging. What does it tell us? That God does not want us to sit when we want to sit. When we, we're out of breath a little bit, it's okay to rest. But not sit too long where your bones get weary. Have you, have you ever exercised a real lot? Then you made the mistake and you just sat for a little while. Then you got up. And Hello? Well, it works that way spiritually too. You have to stay a little active spiritually all the time. Why? So your bones don't get stiff. Come on, laugh with me. A couple of points. Each of us should, with all of our heart, know that we can finish our race with joy. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Two, God has given to each of us different talents and gifts, and we're responsible for those. We go to God for him to help us develop in them and then get after it. Amen. Score high. Finish well. Thirdly, we should be no reason for a Christian to be so troubled as they are. And I tell you, their only reason is because their eyes are everywhere else instead of following God. God is not boring. When he started off in my life, I saw teeth move, legs grow out, I saw an entire crooked back pop, pop, pop so loud everybody in the room could hear it. And then God says, it's your turn. I want you to lay hands on the sick. So I just, I told you how I was. If anybody had a sniffle, I was there, Mr. Lay Hands on People. And I was eager to get going with God and not sitting around getting bubbly. And God says, I'm going to get you a job. So he said, I was on welfare at that time. I was just coming out of being a hippie and a drug addict. And God says, I've got great things to show. And then he appears to me and he says, I'm going to use you mightily. And from that day point, and remember there were 30 witnesses to that. They saw him as well. So I'm not just making this up. 
And a couple of them are still alive, so it's okay. Anyway, anyway, since that day, everything changed. I went on a forest fire, and over 60 people got saved. And I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know how to lead them to the Lord. And I prayed for sick, and they got healed, and people got filled with the Holy Spirit. You see, when God wants to use you and you're willing to obey him, then be willing to do what he asks you to do, such as go, bind up the devil, lay hands on the sick. Don't worry about what the devil does by drinking any deadly thing. See, so if you got something out of that, you get a little bit. Come on up here.